Welcome back. Examining the narrative behind the Thanksgiving holiday for some Native Americans, it is considered a day of mourning. And joining us now to discuss is UIC American history professor Haley Negrin. Thank you so much for coming in. Thank you for having me. So let's begin with the story we've been told about Thanksgiving. You know, where did that come from and how has that erased the real experiences of Native communities? Yeah, so, you know, Native people kind of grapple with the day in different ways. There's 574 federally recognized nations across the U.S., so Native people are diverse just like any group of people, but I think it's really important to think about how they have to grapple with the fact that, you know, most Americans really don't understand colonialism and kind of what happened to Native people um, throughout early American history, and this kind of holiday of Thanksgiving is this moment that, um, you know, was developed over time to be a thing that kind of celebrates colonialism and sort of the taking of Native American land. So, for instance, the United uh, American Indians of New England um, have kind of dealt with the day. Since 1970, they've been gathering for a day of mourning mm -hmm. to kind of come together to um, focus on contemporary issues that matter to them, but also mourn their lost ancestors and the territory that's been taken from them. So, you know, this week as families prepare to gather in this spirit of gratitude that has come mm -hmm. out of the holiday, how do you think families should be grappling with you know, and reconciling with the painful history. Yeah, well, I think one thing that's really important, right, is to study a little bit about early American history. That's great, you know, look at the actual history of what happened in the 17th century between pilgrims and Indians. Um, but also just to really focus on the fact that, you know, Chicago is home to a vibrant Native American community today. Seven out of 10 uh, Native people actually live in urban centers. Um, and there's 65,000 Native people living in Chicago and, you know, trying to kind of make their way in the world like anybody else and one thing that you know happens and you know we hear from the community constantly is this frustration with how Native people are represented in the city right so we have the Blackhawks logo which is really a source of pain for a lot of Native people um, you know and what happens is you know when Native people are sort of characterized or made into something out of a, um, settlers imaginations it's really harder for their contemporary issues and things that they're fighting for to be seen as worthy mm -hmm. so and Thanksgiving is part of that right so I mean this is a holiday that's developed um, in New England to kind of legitimize um, early New England settlers um, and their relationships with Native people and to kind of make colonialism look like this bloodless thing um, that Native people kind of wanted settlers to come. In reality, it's just such a complex history that really needs to be acknowledged. Mm -hmm. So right now there is a big uh, case that the Supreme Court is considering that could have a huge impact on Native American families and beyond. Can you tell us about that? Absolutely. And I think it's, again, like to your point, you know, as we're gathering as a family, family this week, you know, with our own families and gratitude, we need to remember that actually Native families are under threat right now. So Brackeen versus Holland is a really important case. Um, the Indian Child Welfare Act of 1978 was this act that was passed to protect Native families. So basically, if Native children were up for adoption, um, it made the act made it so Native people would remain in their extended families or within their tribal nations. And this was a response to the fact that, you know, the U.S. boarding school system misplaced and took hundreds of thousands of Native children out of their homes in the early 20th century. And this process continues throughout the 20th century. I mean, in the 70s, the act was developed um, because about 80% of Native families had at least one child in foster care at that time. Mm. And they were being taken out and put in white families. And so the act was really developed to protect Native people and their kids. And so right now, people are really worried about the Supreme Court case because the, um, the plaintiffs are actually making an argument that Native people are members of a racial group rather than a nation, um, that Native kids aren't citizens sense, that they don't have a, a right or in a sovereign-to-sovereign -sovereign relationship with the U.S. federal government. So this could actually infringe on tribal sovereignty as a whole. Okay. So it threatens Native kids and um, just the idea of Native people as nations, which they've held on to for 400 years. Well, thank you so much for coming in this morning, Professor. And for more information about uh, issues concerning Na Native Americans in Illinois and Chicago, you can check out the Chicago American Indian Community Collaborative. Their website is Chicago. AICC.com. You can also uh, check them out on Facebook and Instagram. Hey, Tim.